ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Tuesday, June 20th. Happy West Virginia Day. I'm your host, Paul Swan. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Here until 6 o'clock, we'll get your text in this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. we got a lot to get into today. One of my favorite subjects is name, image, and likeness. We're going to dive into that here in a little bit. If you're of a younger set, well, you know what? You don't have to be of a younger set. You can be a 50-year-old person. You can be a 60-year-old person. If you like gaming and you like playing college football on your PlayStation or Xbox, you're probably excited for the game coming out next year. Well, there's a lawsuit now. We'll get into that. That's going to be fun. The game's not even on the shelves just yet. It's coming out possibly next year, and yet here it is. We got a lawsuit already. So we'll get into that. We'll get into what you have to say. There was a lot of conversation yesterday about now retired West Virginia basketball coach Bob Huggins. And should there be anyone to come back from previous years uh, with maybe a WVU pedigree to maybe take over? Should there be an outsider come in? We got some text yesterday. One texter even said that, um, well, asked the question, Would Tom Cream be a candidate? Would there be a shot? And according to Chuck Landon in his column, no, no, that's no, no. So everybody's talking about this. Even the columnist is talking about it. I'm I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm just going to read the one line. Again, you you should support Chuck. But um, I like what he said. I, I feel like this was directed. He said, the list runs the gamut, the gamut of decent to no chance to know how to ridiculous. I'm butchering this. I'm sorry, Chuck. I, I apologize for butchering your prose here. For example, well-known commentator Dick Vitale already is pounding the drum for Tom Crean, who was once a highly respected coach. Now he's unemployed. There's a reason for that. Locally, a scribe suggested former West Liberty coach Jim Crutchfield who has been a tremendous, successful Division II basketball coach. That's not going to happen either. Those are the words of Chuck Landon. you got to read his column. It's Second Guest Tuesday. I always look forward to Tuesday and reading what Chuck has to say. We're going to try to get – we need to get Chuck back on the show. I promise you we need to do that. Uh, So uh, Chuck is already throwing him out there. You've been throwing him out there, and we'll take your suggestions, 304 396 talk 304-396-8255. I think it's a good job. It really is. It's a good job. It's one of the best in the state of West Virginia. It has the potential. Honestly, if you're a college basketball coach of any quality, seriously, if you have any serious chance of taking this job, you should get your name in the hat because it's a good job. I've been following a little bit about Bob Huggins as well. Uh, One of the guys I follow, we've had him on the show before, uh, the editor of WV Sports Now, Mike Osti. Mike's a great guy. And he just said a few minutes ago in the Facebook post by one of Bob Huggins' daughters that's circulating, she says her dad offered to go to rehab for 60 days and then return to coach WVU for the 2023-24 season. Not surprised at all, but this further shows West Virginia made the decision to move on. And honestly, I feel like there should have been an intervention sooner than later. Of course, I don't know all of Bob Huggins' personal issues. I don't know all the details that's going on in his life. But if there's any hint that he needed help, I think West Virginia should have maybe been a little bit more proactive. But at this point, Bob has made the decision, helped to make that decision to retire and to move on from West Virginia. Again, I hope he gets all the help he needs, and I hope people are there to support him. Let's not remember him just for what happened here with this DUI. I hope that he can come back from this. And, you know, I don't know if coaching is going to be in the – in the future for him, but I hope he can come back as a human being, as a person, and really get the help that he needs. But still, it's an interesting topic. We'll keep an eye on it because uh, I'm sure it's going to be a splashy hire. And 
there's a lot of opinions who should get this job. So a lot of names have been thrown out there. It's a great job. It can be anyway. You're, you're competing in the Big 12. You've got the resources. you got a, a pretty loyal fan base. To be fair, basketball is well, well supported in, in West Virginia. And Marshall's attendance could be up. Marshall's attendance could be better. But when it's cooking, Marshall – is really a rocking place at the Henderson Center when fans are filling it up and it's cooking. It really is a great place to watch a game just because of the fans. And that's the same thing with the Coliseum and with WVU. So basketball really is a – it's a premier sport in the state of West Virginia. Would I say more so in regards to it's preferred over football? Maybe not. Football is always going to football. But I would honestly say – there's an affinity for basketball, or at least there's an affection for basketball. I mean, some of the some of the classic all-time greats in the NBA come out of the state of West Virginia. I mean, Jerry West, the logo. And don't forget the guy that has a statue over at the Henderson Center, Hal Greer, named to the NBA 50. I mean, that was, as a Herd fan, when I was a little younger, when he was named to the, the all-50 team, the first 50, that was amazing to see Hal Greer, a Marshall guy, getting that honor. So, yeah, there's a lot of potential for basketball, not only in, in West Virginia's case, but for Marshall as well. As well, there's a lot of potential here. So we'll get into what's happening with name, image, and likeness. I want to talk about that when we continue. The text line is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. I also want to talk about my guy Tavion Kinsey. If you've been following social media, and if you haven't, that's fine. But the Los Angeles Lakers were taking a look at Tavion Kinsey. Now, I'm a Lakers fan. There are two NBA teams that I really am interested in. Every other team can take it or leave it. It's the New York Knicks, because I have an affinity for most New York pro teams. Most, not all. And the Los Angeles Lakers. I grew up a fan of the Lakers, and I also grew up liking the Knicks because, I'm going to be honest with you, I like Rick Pitino. Back when he was coaching, I was a Rick Pitino fan. I used to have more of an affinity for basketball than I did football, so I like Rick Pitino. Now, the Knicks are kind of a a work in progress still, but the Lakers, I couldn't help not be a Lakers fan because when I was going to school – Lakers were the team, Magic Johnson, of course. And with the Philadelphia 76ers, Dr. J, all of that there was out there. And my friends, it was almost cliche, but my friends fell into two camps, Boston Celtics fans and Los Angeles Lakers fans. And so the fact that Tavion Kinsey, a Marshall guy, and the Lakers are looking at him, that's awesome. That's awesome for me because Tavion Kinsey as a Laker would be great for me. It would make it a little bit more interesting for me because, let's be honest, the Lakers have not been interesting as of late, even with LeBron. So we'll talk about the breakdown there. I I read a scout on him I wanted to share with you. So we'll get into that. We'll do that when we continue, but opportunity for you exists at 304-396-TALK, 304 396 Eight two five five. More coming up on this edition of The Drive. It's ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Tuesday, June 20th edition. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. It's also West Virginia Day. The day that West Virginia became a state. Happy birthday to West Virginia. That's been all over my timeline all day long. How do you wish a state happy birthday? I know, I know. It's still we do it though. So uh, happy birthday to everyone. Uh, it's a great place to live. It has its faults. West Virginia does have its faults. But every place you go has its faults. So. Uh, I'm happy to say that I am a, uh, I'm a proud West Virginian. So happy birthday, West Virginia. 
We'll get our text in this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Welcome back to this edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. So if you've been following social media, you know Tavion Kenzie is kind of a big deal. Potential, at least the, the scuttlebutt I hear is, I don't know if that's a proper term. I'm going to use that. The, the word on the street is. He could be a potential second-round pick or an undrafted free agent in the draft. And so he was working out for the Lakers, and that makes me happy because the Lakers need some help. you got free agency coming up, so they need some help. And they've got limited cap space, and so the draft might be where the Lakers need to work. So the Lakers have been working out various guards. They have two picks at 17 and 47. So I was reading the USA Today site that covers the Lakers because there was a story about Tavion Kinsey because they brought him in, and they made it sound like, hey, you know what, this is, this is kind of intriguing. We have Tavion Kinsey coming in, and they describe him as six foot five, weighs 185 pounds, uh, showcasing his scoring ability throughout his collegiate career, talked about his numbers, you know, giving you the basic breakdown of him. And said that he's known for his attacking style. He excels in the mid-range area. Again, this is, you know, paraphrasing what the USA Today site was talking about when it comes to Kinsey. Talked about how he utilized his jumper to contribute significantly on offense. I mean, that's a pretty good description of him so far. And the site said that he boasts an impressive overall offensive efficiency. Yeah, it talked about his number, shooting 50.7% during his time in college. His last season, he shot an impressive 54.2% from the field. Mentioned that as a facilitator, a secondary facilitator, he averages 5.4 assists per game. Talked about how that was an improvement from his previous year. So, I had a lot of nice things to say about Tavion. And talked about his ability to draw fouls. We knew that. Averages over six free throws a game. The site did say that he struggles with his free throw shooting. Career mark of 73.2%. And I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know if I can make 73.2% of my free throws. So I'm not going to criticize. As a player in the NBA, you got to hit those free throws. As a college player, you got to hit those free throws. One thing they highlighted was, or at least pointed out, his th- three point shooting. Talked about how it's varied over the years, ranging from over 40% on a couple occasions to a low of 18.3% in the 21-22 campaign. The site said he averaged 2.13 point attempts per game at Marshall. Could be an area for improvement at the next level. So highlight that. Could be an area for improvement at the next level. And so they're saying that he could be a potential second-round pick. They also acknowledge that he could be an undrafted free agent in the upcoming draft. And I think we all want to hear Tavion's name called. That's the thing we're looking for. We want to hear Tavion's name called. And if the Lakers pull out with the 47th pick, with the 47th pick, the L.A. Lakers select Tavion Kinsey Marshall, I think we all would lose our collective minds here because we love that guy. Absolutely. As a player, we love watching him play. As a person, we love him. I'm a fan of Tavion Kinsey. I'm a fan of a lot of these guys because they're good character guys. And Tavion always had a positive attitude. He was hard on himself, always hard on himself. But at the same time, he had a a positive attitude about how he went about his business, acknowledging when things didn't go right and how that didn't set well with him. I don't think I can recall a real instance where he was like, look, the guys surrounding me are bad. I never heard that kind of ego from him. I mean, he's good. He knows he's good. But at the same time, he doesn't project an ego like, you know, I'm infallible. So, and if you follow him on social media, he's super motivational as well. So this excited me when I saw this report. I was really happy to hear that, okay, maybe Tavion's getting a lot of looks, maybe there's a method to this madness. And, of course, you know, he's going to be in the TBT, right? Going to be in the TBT. I mean, that's a smart move. I know there was some conversation and criticism that, hey, look, a potential NBA draft prospect, a potential first or second rounder. And let's be fair, I think second round is what I'm hearing more than anything. If he has the potential to be drafted, it could be second round. 
do first or second round potential NBA draft picks enter the TBT? Well, no. But this is the Marshall alumni team we're talking about here. It just kind of beats different. It is different. This is the TBT team that made Ott Elmore a national treasure. This is how the Marshall TBT team rolls. Heard that. So is it fair to say that this is not a normal play for a potential draft pick? Yeah, this isn't a normal play. Could this help Tavion? Absolutely. Is this something that could generate a little bit more of attention? Absolutely. Do we all have a fear that Tavion's not going to show up and play well? I don't think we do. I really think that if he goes through this thing, and keep this in mind, if he's not drafted and he goes to this TBT, that's going to maybe, depending on how well he performs, that could improve his stock as far as being being an undrafted free agent. There's nothing wrong with being an undrafted free agent. If you get in and then you can stick, it's on you. It's up to you what you can do. If you get in and can perform, that's the barrier. It's, hey, I'm in. I didn't get drafted, but I'm in. So now you got to prove yourself. And that, I think that's what Tavian's been working towards and trying to do. So I'm hoping that it's the case. And I'm hoping, you know what, I'm not going to hate it. If he's, he's a Laker, I'm not going to hate it. Is there a team that you don't want Tavion to be on? I think that's a better question. Tavion's going to take whatever team picks him, so we're not even going to ask him that question. We wouldn't dare. It's like, Tavion, is there a team you, you don't want to be on? But I can ask you that question. Is there a team that you don't want Tavion to be on? You see that team pop up, and you go, no, no, I, I don't want him to be on that team. Like, for example, I don't want Tavion Kinsey to be a Boston Celtic. I just don't. I don't like Boston. I don't like the Celtics. I don't want Tavion Kinsey to be a Boston Celtic because I'm not going to root for him. I like Tavion. I'm not going to root for Tavion if he's a Boston Celtic. It's nothing against him. It's nothing he did. I'm just not going to do it. Absolutely. That's the same thing as if, for example, if Marshall players were drafted to the Baltimore Ravens, no, I'm not rooting for them. I'll root for them individually when they leave. I'll support them when they leave that team, but I'm not – when they're on that team, they're dead to me. Absolutely. So I also have that feeling for the Cleveland Browns. I also have that feeling for the Pittsburgh Steelers, the San Francisco 49ers. If you're on one of those four teams, you're dead to me. Absolutely dead to me. Tennessee Titans or the old Houston Oilers, dead to me there too. So that's five teams. You're dead to me. I don't have a problem with the new uh, Houston team. It's the, uh, it's, the old, it's the Titans. That's the team I hate because that's the Houston Oilers. Texture is taking me up on this. Good for you. Um, Texture agrees with me, partially. I don't want Tavion to go to the Celtics or Knicks. And now, come on, I want Broadway. What if he goes to Broadway, New York City? Come on, that would be great. I would like that. If he went to New York City, then all of a sudden we'd all be Knicks fans, and I could, I could be a, I could be a better Knicks fan. I'm not going to lie to you. I like the Lakers. I like the Knicks. I know you're supposed to pick one. I'm not going to. I know I profess you should pick one. I'm not going to. But I definitely don't want to see him on the Celtics. 304-396-TALK. 304-396-8255. Not a big fan. Now, with that said, I would be happy for Tavion if he made a NBA team that I didn't like. I would be happy for him. I would just have to give him the business for the rest of his career. Absolutely. Completely. If he won an NBA championship with a team I didn't like, I would be happy for him. I would begrudge him nothing. I would be annoyed by it, but I would be happy for him. But with that said, I don't want him to be a Boston Celtic. More coming up on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Hey, it's Paul. Are you interested in starting your own podcast? Well, you're in luck. Spotify has an incredible platform that makes podcasting super easy. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and it's your all-in-one solution. Let me break it down for you. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. No matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Once your masterpiece is ready, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and other podcast platforms. It's hassle-free, and it gets your podcast heard everywhere. But wait, there's more. 
Spotify even supports video podcasts, taking your content to the next level. You can engage with your fans through question and answer sessions and polls as well, making the conversation interactive and exciting. It's optional, but it's highly recommended. Now let's talk about earning money. Spotify for Podcasters offers various monetization options, including ads and podcast subscriptions. Yes, you heard that right. You can turn your passion into profit. And the best part, it's all free. No catch, no hidden fees, just pure podcast goodness. And I personally experienced the incredible features of Spotify for podcasters. Having those options like video podcasts and engaging with fans through Q&A and polls really has taken my creativity to new heights. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Are you ready to get started? Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or visit www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters today. The world is waiting to hear your voice. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We continue on with this edition of The Drive. It's Tuesday, June 20th. We highlight this day because it's West Virginia Day. 160 of them. Happy birthday to the state of West Virginia. Our text line this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's the number to be a part of the program. I asked you earlier, if you're just joining us, I'll ask the question again. I asked if there was a team that you didn't want to see draft Tavion Kinsey. If that team comes up with its selection, you don't want that team to call Tavion Kinsey's name. So far, we have got... Celtics, I, I second that one. We also have Knicks. Uh, I'm good with the Knicks. I like the Knicks. Texter just wrote in, said, no Celtics or Grizzlies. No Celtics or Grizzlies. I can see that. I can absolutely see that. Which team would you like to see not, not draft Tavion Kinsey? You don't want to see Tavion Kinsey on that roster at all. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's the text line to be a part of today's edition of The Drive right here in ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. You know, the way the NBA has been as of late with teams like the Denver Nuggets that can all of a sudden win an NBA championship and the next generation of players coming up, and it not necessarily is always going to be the the dynasties that we've seen in the past, like the Celtics, like the Lakers. Almost any team has a legitimate shot. Almost any team has a legitimate shot of being an NBA champion now, which to me, I like the old dynasties. I do, but at the same time, I think you got to freshen it up a little bit. I'll concede that point. you got to freshen it up a little bit. And so here we are with an NBA final that had Denver and Miami. I'd be cool with Tavion on, on the Heat. I'd like that. Tavion on the Heat. How do we feel about the 76ers? Do we want to see Tavion play for the 76ers? I mean, we could go down the entire, entire list. On Twitter, I just got this remark. I just want to see he and Elmore, 33, that's his Twitter handle, in the league, period. Don't care which teams. I don't care which team either, except for the Celtics. I'm not against it. I don't want it to happen, but I'm not against it. So if we had to choose, which team would we not want to see Tavion Kinsey land on? I know that's not um, that's not usually how that goes. It's which team do you want to see him play for? All right. Here are – I'll just go down the list a little bit. I'll yay or nay it. Bucks, yes. Celtics, no. 76ers, maybe. Cavaliers, no. But with that said, if he played for the Cavaliers, it'd be easier for a lot of herd fans to go see him play in Cleveland. Knicks, yes. Nets, no. Hawks, yes, I'm good with. Heat, yes, I'm good with. Raptors, yes, I'm good with. Bulls, no. I'm not good with the Bulls. Pacers, no. Wizards, oh no. No, definitely. 
Magic, let me back you on that one. Hornets, Charlotte, but think about that for a second. If he was on the Charlotte Hornets, again, that's not a bad road trip. Okay, I, I will approve Charlotte, as if I really have a say. I approve Charlotte. Is anyone keeping track of this, which teams I'm picking and which I'm not? Somebody keep track of this. Uh, Pistons, no, I don't know. No, that's enough. Back in the day, no, no. Definitely don't want to see him on any Detroit team, no. Okay, so that's the Eastern Conference. And, again, so I think ultimately we don't want to see him. Okay, I'm taking a lot of liberties here. I don't want to see him on the Celtics roster, the Cavaliers roster, uh, the Nets roster, and pretty much other than Charlotte, I think I'd be okay with it. If you had to pin me down, I'm going to say Celtics definitely no. Cavaliers definitely no. Detroit definitely no. Nets definitely no. Everything else I'd be okay with. Western Conference, I have a little bit more of an opinion. Uh, Nuggets, yes. Texter said no to the Grizzlies. Kings, yes, I'd be fine. Suns, I'd be good with that. Clippers, no, because I'm a Lakers fan. Warriors, I'd be good with that. Lakers, obviously, yes. Timberwolves, no. Pelicans, no. Thunder, yeah, I'm good with that. I'm good with the Thunder. Mavericks, I'm okay with the Mavericks. Jazz, I'd be okay with that. I don't have a problem with that. Trailblazers, I don't have a problem with the Trailblazers. Rockets, no, I don't have a problem with the Rockets. And the Spurs, no, I never have a problem with the Spurs. So I'm a little bit more lenient. than what, And again, this is all subjective. I don't think I'd have a true problem with too many teams. Clippers, maybe. I mean, sure, the Clippers have been better than the Lakers, but what does that really mean? So those are some of the teams that maybe I would be okay with. I think more so I don't want to see them in a few teams on the Eastern Conference. And again, I'm going to hold on Celtics. I'm going to hold on Cavs. I'm going to hold on Nets. And then I'm going to hold on Detroit. Those will be the four that I'll stay firm on. Everything else is up for negotiation. And, of course, if he gets picked for those teams I don't like, I still won't like them, but I'll be happy for Tavion. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. That's the number to be a part of today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. While we're debating that, I got stupid college football news to get into. We'll do that. Stupid college football news. We'll talk about the NIL story with EA Sports. We'll also go over the dumb news of the day in college sports when we continue on this edition of The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Tuesday, June 20th edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. The text line is still open, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. I'm trying to figure out if there's a team just we all can agree on that we do not want to see Tavion Kinji get drafted by. Now, if it comes down to that's the team that has to draft Tavion and Tavion doesn't get drafted any other way, but we take that. We qualify this by saying we won't like it. We'll accept it, but we won't like it. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Let's start with the dumb college football news first. Dumb college football news. Conference USA has rebranded its logo and how it refers to itself. Now, in years past, if you would write a story or you would type Conference USA, you would abbreviate it C hyphen USA. C hyphen USA. No longer, in a really cringy post on social media today, they announced that the hyphen was no longer. So, no hyphen now in C USA. It's C USA, no C hyphen USA. And that's not even the worst of it. There's a new streamlined logo, so they've freshened up the logo a little bit. It's not a bad logo, ultimately. 
they should have left it alone because they added to it. So they, they streamlined it. It's blue now. The star looks red. I think there's some little minor details there. So they've streamlined that a little bit. But they've also added to it. And the video that they posted, they show the CUSA and its graphic. And then the USA flips. And then above it, it says no limits. And the slogan is no limits on us because no limits on is right above the U and the S and the CUSA logo. No limits on us. So no limit. Master P. I think Master P. You remember Master P? I'm not going into a full explanation of Master P. If you know, you know. And if you don't, it's your loss. But Master P, no limits. No limit. It's good to see that Master P was consulted on on this logo. Dumb, I told you it was dumb college football news. Well, we went there. Now let's talk about college football news that um, it's going to get interesting. So I went back to a release that Marshall sent out last year because it involves the Brander Group. The Brander Group and Marshall have a have a partnership now. So I went back to get a little background on the Brander Group because the Brander Group is suing EA, EA Sports, Electronic Arts. So what does Brander Group do? It's responsible for negotiating group licensing deals over 50 Division I schools. It's filed a lawsuit against EA Sports over name, image, and likeness deals for the upcoming EA Sports college football video game. Allegedly, reportedly, EA Sports contacted the Brander Group multiple times in 21 and 22 to discuss offering NIL deals to athletes with negotiations being handled through the Brander Group. However, in May of this year, EA Sports decided to work with one team partners for group bargaining instead. So the Brander Group has filed a lawsuit. They're saying and claiming that it should still have the right to negotiate contracts and deals for athletes represented by the schools that it works for, Marshall being one of them. The lawsuit alleging EA Sports and its tactics put partner schools in a difficult position, forcing them to choose between breaching their contracts with Brander Group or potentially missing out on opportunities for their athletes to participate in the game. It also claims that the athletes are being deprived of fair compensation for the use of their NIL. So if you're not familiar with this, there are reports that the deal negotiated with one team partners offers around $500 to each player who opts in to have their name, image, and likeness featured in the game. Now, another group that you probably haven't heard of, the College Football Players Association, is urging players to boycott the game in response to this offer, claiming it doesn't represent their best interest. So now the lawsuit by the Brander Group doesn't involve any of that. $500 offer any college athletes. It revolves around the representation of players in schools and negotiations with EA Sports for the college football video game. Now, this is representation, not compensation. Now, I wanted to go back and read up again on the Brander Group because I remembered from that release, and it goes back to November of 2022. So when I found that release, and I'm cherry-picking a little bit, but this part stood out to me. In the release, it said the partnership with TBG, this is the Marshall release, The partnership with TBG allows for the collective use of student-athletes' NIL and licensing and marketing programs co-branded with Marshall's logos and marks. Student-athletes will have the option to voluntarily join a group licensing program. Participation in the program will not limit any student athlete's NIL rights in their individual licensing and marketing activities. So does that mean as a student athlete, I have to take a group deal? Does that mean as a student athlete that I have the ability to go out and make my own deal separate of this, that I don't have to be party to this? I could join this opportunity voluntarily and be a part of this, or I don't have to. And participation in the program will not limit any student-athletes' NIL rights in their individual licensing and marketing activities. 
So if I wanted to go out and accept this deal, shouldn't I have the opportunity to go out and accept this deal? If, if this group approached me and said that we're going to offer you for to use your name, to use your name, your image, your likeness. We just want to have a representation of you in the game. Yeah, we can, we can offer you $500. One time, it's a one-time payment. Basically, we're going to put your name, your image, your likeness. We're going to put you in the game. So when someone picks Marshall, for example, someone picks Marshall and you load up the game and you see the roster and all of a sudden you're playing on defense, quarterback from the other team throws the ball in the video game, and you've taken control of defense, and then all of a sudden you picked it off. And that avatar, the player you're controlling at that point, you've picked the ball off, and you're running it back to the end zone. You're Micah Abraham. Micah Abraham has gotten compensated for that. It's a digital avatar, $500. No royalties, anything like that, straight up. And so that is a deal that's out there. But, again, the lawsuit here isn't about – the money, it's about the fact that the Brander Group is basically saying, look, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't go out and exclude us from these deals because we represent Marshall. We represent Marshall for these licensing groups, these licensing deals. The Brander Group is saying that, hey, look, we should have the right to negotiate these contracts, these deals for athletes represented by the schools it works for. And so that's going to be the interesting fight here is, are we going to see this thing torpedoed? Because there's a fight now for collective groups, Brander Group saying that, hey, look, we have this right to collectively bargain here. And it's my name, image, and likeness. So if I say, look, I want to be in the video game. I don't want to be represented by Brander Group. I'm going to take the deal. So when I'm playing the video game and I'm the quarterback, Here it is, Paul Swan, back to pass. Name, image, and likeness is going to continue and continue and continue because this is going to be the Wild West. There's nothing that's going to stop this freight train right now. It's just going to get out of hand. So that's going to be an interesting story to follow when it comes to this. And again, name, image, and likeness, if there would have been a little bit more of a firm control, the NCAA would have taken charge of this. When it had the opportunity, when it had the mandate almost to take charge of this, we wouldn't see this out of hand right now. And again, you know, you've got the IRS getting involved now because you've got these trusts set up where people were thinking they're giving money to almost what comes out to be a slush fund here in the name of name, image, and likeness. Now you have groups that are making deals with universities for collective negotiation. But again, I go back to that release. And again, this is just the Marshall release. This doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things because it's just a way to describe it. But the way this was described, the list partnership, and I'm assuming this is how it rolls for all the other schools, is student athletes have that opportunity to join a group licensing program. Participation in the program doesn't limit any student athletes' NIL rights and their individual licensing and marketing activity. So, Is this saying that a player can't go out and get themselves put in the video game because they have to go through this group instead of someone else? We'll figure it out. Thanks for tuning in. Back tomorrow. Have a great night, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington. This is your radio home for Pittsburgh Pirates baseball, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.